the myth about spray foam and leaking roofs. We're gonna address a really common misconception about spray foam used in roofs. I have personally been advised by my own contractor to avoid retrofitting the attic in this house with spray foam because it will mask roof leaks. This is a really common misconception even among professionals. The logic is that unlike, say, fiberglass or cellulose insulation that would allow leaking water to pass through and cause visible damage to the interior, spray foam would hold the water up against the roof sheathing, causing it to slowly rot without the occupants ever knowing about it until it was too late. Usually the problem is attributed to closed cell spray foams, but sometimes it's extended to just all spray foams in general. And the argument is not so much that spray foam causes a problem, but that it masks a problem that would otherwise be resolved before it caused very much damage. What's funny about this is that in my entire career in building science forensics, I have never come across this problem, not once nor am I aware of even a single one of my colleagues dealing with this issue firsthand in their professional practice. This is always just a friend of a friend of a friend type of problem. But it's worth talking about because it's such a common misconception. So let's get into it. First, why might spray foam be an appealing choice in roofs? It helps here to begin with a classic vented roof assembly. If you think of a house the way a child would draw it, uh, a square with a triangle on top, we typically insulate on the flat and the attic is not part of the conditioned space. We do this for a few reasons. One is that by insulating on the flat, we need less insulation, right? There's just less surface area to cover. It also lets us vent our attics to remove moisture. Our ceilings are never perfectly airtight and warm interior air gets through our ceilings, passes through the insulation and reaches our cold roof sheathing and framing where condensation will occur. Venting our roofs by introducing dry exterior air at the soffits and letting it out at the ridge safely removes that moisture. This is an incredibly economical approach. It works in every climate, even very cold ones, and it gives us a lot of flexibility in choosing the type of insulation we'd like to use. The insulation is inside the attic, right? So we can use the less expensive, moisture sensitive insulations without them getting rained on. So why might we be interested in doing things differently? Well, for one, it can be really hard to air seal the ceiling because we tend to have a lot of penetrations through them. It's not hard to air seal the ceiling well enough to avoid moisture problems in the attic and to be generally comfortable, but it really can be hard to seal it if you have more ambitious energy or comfort goals. It's also difficult to properly vent roofs when the roof lines are complicated. Venting works best when the intake is low and the outlets are high. Venting roofs is also a fire hazard, and you might be particularly interested in avoiding the possibility of bringing in burning embers through your soffit vents if you live in an area that's prone to wildfires. You might also have an existing home, and you might want to convert the attic into conditioned space. The alternative to vented roofs or vented attics is to design an unvented roof over a conditioned attic. This involves bringing the attic into the conditioned space, which is great. But if we're no longer venting to remove moisture, we're gonna to have to find another way to control condensation. We have two general approaches for doing this. The first is to insulate on top of the roof deck. This keeps our roof sheathing warm so that moisture from the interior of our house generated by occupants cooking, cleaning, breathing, whatever, never finds a cold surface where condensation can occur. This is a fantastic approach. The downside is that it's more expensive. We have to use more insulation to cover a larger surface area and the kinds of rigid insulations that we use on top of roof decks tend to be more expensive, not just to buy, but also to install. The installation component can be really tricky in climates that are more mildly cold, Roofers are pretty accustomed to working with exterior insulations on, on roofs in Canada, but I doubt very much I could find many roofers experienced enough to do the work for me at my home here in Texas. Which brings us to our second option for unvented roofs. 
rather than insulate on top of the roof sheathing, we could insulate on the underside of the sheathing. But if we do this, our roof sheathing will still be cold. So in order to prevent condensation on our cold sheathing, we must prevent warm, moisture-laden interior air from reaching it. And this means using an insulation that's impermeable to air, which is where spray foam comes in. In warmer climates, we can use either the closed cell or the open cell variety of spray foam. But in cold climates, we must select the more vapor closed variety, the closed cell. This is because it gets colder in cold climates and it stays colder for longer. In climates with only mild winters, it's sufficient to just prevent moisture laden air from reaching the cold sheathing. In colder climates, we must control not just moist air, but also moisture that reaches the sheathing by passing through the spray foam itself via molecular diffusion. Using spray foam to insulate roofs can be really appealing because it's a reliable way of controlling condensation. It gives us a more airtight assembly with a lot less effort than we can usually get with vented assemblies. And that has both comfort and energy benefits. And we get to occupy the attic. So you can see why this might make for an especially good choice for retrofitting existing houses. Roofs also last a long time. You can insulate with spray foam without replacing the whole roof. Closed cell spray foam also greatly improves wind uplift resistance, which can be significant for resiliency in hurricanes. Okay, so these are some of the reasons spray foam might be particularly appealing to use in roofs. Do we need to be worried about the roof leak thing? And the answer is no. Well, with some caveats. First of all, the job of insulation is to insulate. We use it for thermal control and for condensation control. We do not use insulation of any kind to control rainwater in roof assemblies. Insulation is not what we should be relying on to fix rainwater management problems. Picking the right insulation does not relieve us of the burden of detailing our roofs properly. Spray foam of any kind under a properly installed and detailed roof system poses no water management risk. But second of all, the logic that spray foam would mask a roof leak is actually backward. Open cell spray foam wouldn't mask anything and closed cell foam would be more likely to isolate the effects of a defect in the roof membrane, making a leak less severe. But again, this is beside the point. Roofs receive the most exposure to both rain and UV on our buildings, and we must therefore be attentive in their design and their installation, regardless of the thermal and condensation control strategy that we choose. So if you wanna use spray foam, use spray foam. If you prefer not to use spray foam, there are plenty of other assemblies that will work, but this leak masking issue is indeed a myth and it isn't a good reason to inform your decision one way or another. Now, finally, one last caveat. There are lots of other possible roof designs and lots of acceptable materials. The physics we've just discussed apply to all of them, but I've presented only a handful of the most common configurations. Design is about trade-offs, and my purpose here is to better equip you to make better decisions in the context of your own project and your own preferences.